we will hear from Sarah Raimundo from the Philippines. Uh, Sarah is the International Liaison Officer of Bayan, the New Patriotic Alliance, a coalition of left-wing Philippine organizations. She organizes for Commission One, the cause of national liberation of the International League of People's Struggle, and chairs the Philippines Bolivarian Venezuelan Friendship Association. She is a columnist at the Philippines online progressive journalism platform, bulatlat.com, and hosts the Kodau Productions podcast, Itanago Mokai Prof, Ask the Professor with Filipino revolutionary Jose Maria Sison. She is an associate editor of the Journal of Labor and Society and is a full-time faculty at the Center for International Studies at the University of Philippines, Diliman. Uh, Sarah, you can take it away. Okay, so uh, U.S. militarism in the Philippines. Um, the Balikatan exercises, let me begin with the Balikatan exercises that uh, started in March 28th and ended in April 28th. Um, so Balikatan is a Tagalog word for shoulder to shoulder. It is a long-standing bilateral exercise highlighting the uh, deep-rooted partnership between the Philippines and the United States. Um, this uh, Balikatan is a critical opportunity to uh, work shoulder to shoulder with uh, Philippine allies toward a free, open Indo-Pacific that is more connected, prosperous, secure, and resilient um, as our Indo-Pacific strategy calls for. So this is uh, a statement made by U.S. Charge Affairs Interim Heather Baravia. So it is quite ironic that um, after barely 31 years, which is uh, just recent history. Uh, so uh, in September 1991, uh, the Filipino people's victory over the U.S. military bases was applauded uh, by the world. Yet um, uh, just 31 years after, uh, U.S. Um, troops are back uh, with over 5,000 of them working with um, almost 4,000 uh, soldiers uh, from uh, the um, AFP or the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Um, so this is a short history of the uh, Republic of the Philippines, United States, uh, 1947 Mutual Basis Agreement. And uh, of course, um, the history of U.S. militarism in the Philippines did not just start uh, in 1947. Um, it started in uh, when the United States hijacked uh, the, uh, the victory of uh, the Katipunan Revolution, or uh, the one that was led by Andres Bonifacio in um, 1896 against uh, our Spanish colonizers. So by 1898 um, and uh, onwards to uh, the uh, states, uh, U.S.-sponsored Commonwealth and uh, the building of the Philippine Republic, um, figures, American figures like uh, Douglas MacArthur, General Douglas MacArthur, and William Howard uh, Taft um, became uh, the architects of the um, Phil Philippine um, military strategy. So these are uh, uh, the, the, the 1947 Mutual Basis uh, Treaty uh, covered this much um, land. And um, this is obviously uh, a way of uh, dispossessing uh, millions of Filipino farmers and fisher folk from um, basically uh, leading a, a decent life. So that, that was um, thousands upon uh, thousands hectares of arable lands with uh, rich agricultural and mineral potentials. And this is why um, the history of uh, militarism in the Philippines after uh, the Second World War, uh, when uh, the US, United States be became the um, global hegemon, um, is marked by um, a disparate exchange uh, in trade. So before this, uh, the Philippines, uh, along with the other uh, colonies, uh, were, um, were, were uh, was a site of um, the drain of value from the global south to the global north. Um, in the second half of the 20th century, um, 
this unequal exchange was translated into a uh, disparate exchange, as Peter Custers call it, where um, military largesse of the United States to a semi-colony like the Philippines would, would double, triple, even quadruple for the profits of uh, the United States. And of course, um, this, is, this has everything to do with um, the military sector being a very uh, reliant sector for uh, regulating the crisis of uh, capitalism and imperialism. Um, so the U.S. is uh, the major arms exporters uh, to the Philippines, even post uh, U.S. basis uh, uh, treaty. Even that was that one was abrogated, and um, in the current um, dispensation uh, under both uh, Trump and uh, Biden, uh, the Philippines under Duterte enjoyed uh, U.S. military largest. Uh, with its purchase of uh, new aircraft and other uh, hard assets. You know? In fact, um, amidst the pandemic and severe unemployment, uh, Duterte announced a planned purchase of uh, the 15, 15S7I Black Hawk uh, helicopters. So these are mainly um, manufactured by um, the military industrial complex located in the global north. And uh, so basically it is to upgrade uh, our um, you know, aging fleets. Um, we also received notification from the US Congress uh, that um, uh, uh, the US State Department uh, potential sales of attack helicopters and missiles to the Philippines worth a combined uh, $2 billion. And this was in, uh, back in 2020 up to 2021. So basically um, under Joe Biden, um, the United States is looking at bolstering uh, the two nations' 70-year treaty alliance by upholding the Visiting Forces Agreement, uh, which was um, signed uh, by um, Obama, President Barack Obama, and Ninoy Aquino. And uh, the Visiting Forces Agreement has um, definitely paved the way for staging a theater of war against um, Chinese and incursions in the Indo-Pacific region. Um, of course, uh, despite that, Washington refuses to be transparent on U.S. arms sales. Uh, but uh, we all know that uh, it uses uh, tax dollars to fund debt squads and human rights violation, uh, violators from within uh, the Duterte government. So uh, this particular partnership has also sabotaged uh, the peace talks between uh, the insurgents or the National Democratic Front of the Philippines, um, representing the Communist Party of the Philippines and the New People's Army. Uh, this counterinsurgency program is directly related to uh, U.S. militarism in the Philippines. Um, in fact, um, Duterte was pressured by the armed forces of the Philippines that's been taking orders from the U.S. State Department to sabotage uh, the peace talks that would have discussed on the peace table uh, the um, comprehensive agreement on social, social and economic reforms. And uh, back in 2020, um, instead of uh, after canceling the peace talks in 2018, um, at the height of the pandemic, um, Duterte imposed the anti-terror bill, of course, which the uh, Filipino people um, really rallied against. Uh, and this particular anti-terror bill is in full swing and uh, has, of course, uh, uh, benefiting from U.S. military largesse. Um, recently, uh, we witnessed a um, yeah, after the May 9 um, elections that is mired with uh, fraud, massive disinformation, uh, red tagging, killings, um, and uh, vote buying, um, President Joe Biden was the first one to actually congratulate uh, Bongbong Marcos, the son of uh, the dictator Marcos, uh, the U.S.-backed dictator uh, who ruled the Philippines for uh, 20 years. Um, and uh, those were the martial law years when the Philippine military was uh, super politicized and was uh, 
of course, being controlled uh, by uh, uh, the U.S., uh, the United States. And um, according to Biden, he foresees a, a stronger alliance uh, with this uh, um, presumptive regime. And of course, uh, Bongbong Marcos, who denies the dark years of martial law, uh, the accountability of his family um, in relation to the suffering of thousands upon thousands of Filipino people was is just too happy to uh, forge so-called diplomatic ties with uh, the U.S. So what are our calls? Uh, Bayan calls for uh, the abrogation of uh, the Visiting Forces Agreement, um, as well as the cancellation of uh, the 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty, which is the mother treaty uh, of, uh, of all uh, the U.S.-Philippines uh, basis agreement. Uh, we also call on our comrades from different parts of the world who are fighting uh, U.S. wars, uh, U.S. endless wars, uh, U.S. military aggression, um, to support and to continue uh, struggling against uh, US military bases uh, in Asia and in different parts of the world. Uh, we also, uh, of course, uh, would want to extend our um, hands uh, to all of our comrades worldwide who are building the anti-war movement, uh, an anti-war movement that is also and necessarily an anti-imperialist movement that lifts up the cause and the struggles of the peasants. Um, in our case, the peasant struggle uh, reflects our uh, aspirations you know, uh, towards uh, the right to self-determination. Uh, the peasant struggle here in the Philippines, uh, whether that it's underground or above ground, is a, a struggle that uh, challenges, directly challenges US imperialism by uh, painstakingly raising uh, the agrarian question, which is the national question. Um, and so um, this particular struggle is uh, at the core of our anti-fascist struggle that uh, of course also aims to uh, defeat um, tyrants and imperialists, uh, to defeat fascism and towards building a bright socialist future. Thank you.